Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Oh Shoot. I'm your host, Cassidy Lynn, and welcome. Hi. This episode is going to be, honestly, my hope is that it's like an encouraging episode. So I had you guys write in submissions, and basically, I just asked you guys to submit like the kindest thing that has happened to you as a photographer or something that you've witnessed as a photographer and you guys had literally the cutest stories and some of the kindest stories like it's just amazing so um this is going to be a good episode you're definitely going to leave feeling like the your your faith in photography and in your your clients is just going to be restored after listening to this episode okay I can basically guarantee that part Um, Today, I actually woke up at 7 a.m., which is kind of crazy because for me, I wake up around, mm, I would say 8 o'clock usually, and I'm ready to go around like 9 or 9.30 to start my day. But um, today, I woke up at 7. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to wear any makeup. I'm just going to go to a coffee shop. I have this wedding (laughs) that I need to edit. Um... I shot the rehearsal and the wedding and I have around 1400 photos that I need to edit. So I've been telling myself, okay, I'm going to do around 200 photos every single day. If not more today, I did 400 yesterday. I did 200 and I was like, I'm just going to do little bit by little bit and just kind of make it a gradual thing because I feel like sometimes when I edit weddings, I sit down for like two hours, edit all of it and I'm done. But, um, I'm, just kind of, you know, making it a little bit more bite size, I guess you could say. So I woke up at seven, just threw on some clothes and went to a coffee shop. There's this really cute spot in Grand Rapids. If any of you guys live around here, it's called Rise Authentic Baking Co. I think is what it's called. But basically they have the best donuts and they're like, I think gluten free, potentially dairy free but they literally don't taste like it. Like they're just amazing. Plus they have good drinks too. So I went there, got a donut, got a chai and sat down and did my 400 photos for the day. Did not take me long at all. I was there for like maybe 30 minutes at the most. And then I left. Um, but sometimes I, as, as a self-employed queen, I will, try basically every single day to not wear sweatpants. It can be really tempting to just like be a bum every single day because who cares? No one sees you. But I truly try to like get dressed, do my makeup, do my hair, and just be ready for whatever life is going to throw at me that day. I do quite a bit of filming. So I do think that kind of helps me a little bit with like being motivated, but I do feel like getting dressed every day helps me be motivated. But today I was like, eh, I'm just gonna, I'm just literally just gonna wear whatever. I currently am wearing jeans. I put them on for this podcast episode, but I am also wearing my will travel for photos graphic tee, um, that just came out and you guys have been loving this shirt specifically. So thanks for all the love on this shirt. It's a little bit different than what I normally like what my merch normally looks like, but, um, I'm kind of obsessed with it. So I have a few life updates for you guys. Um, let's see. Oh, first thing I wanted to update you guys on is how I'm feeling about slow season. So for me, I really feel like I am in slow season right now. I have, okay. So I have this wedding I'm currently editing. I have one more like 300 photo thing to deliver and then I'm done. Um, and I've been really enjoying slow season. I yesterday just started like writing out a like course outline. I had the outline, but like I'm writing out each section for each core, each like a module in my course. And I just really was flowing with this course. And I'm like, this is why I love slow season because I can work on things that I normally can't. Um, And I'm so free to like, we were trying to plan this dinner for my mom And my sister was like, okay, well, what about this whole weekend? Like, which day are you free? And I was like, I'm free every single day. I could do something every single day, every single hour. I'm free. And that was really a really like empowering moment. I was like, 
this normally does not happen to me. I feel like even last year, I kind of booked into December a little bit, but I feel like right now I I'm really allowing myself to have a little bit more of a personal life, which is very fun and exciting for me. Like I have like three different parties planned for December, like holiday type of things. So just wanted to let you guys know, I'm really vibing with slow season and, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's been good for me. Hopefully for you guys, it's been good and you feel like you've caught up on all of your editing. And if you haven't, you feel like you have time to, so let's get into some of my life updates. I don't really have like, honestly, that many life updates to give you guys. Um, I did go to Washington and while I was there, I had two sessions and I kind of wanted to explain this to you guys because I get a lot of questions about whether or not, um, like you offer, I offer sessions to friends and family for free or like discounts or whatever. Um, so I went to Washington with just the intention of it being like a family trip. Charlie's sister had a baby. So we wanted to go see the baby and Charlie has other family out there. So we wanted to see them. Um, so we went and while I was, well, actually it wasn't even like when I was there, it was before I left, um, two people in Charlie's family actually asked me to do like some sort of session for them. I did a family session for Charlie's sister and then a senior session for one of Charlie's cousins. And that was the main reason why I didn't book like anything else while I was out there because I already had two sessions to do and stuff like this. Um, I did not charge either of them. I just, you know, did them and was like, you know, if you want to send me money, you can, I'm not really going to tell you how much, but like, you can get me a gift or I don't care. You know, it's like, I don't know. I feel like I'm at the point where it's almost like a cool opportunity for me to be able to do things for free for people. It's not like I really need the money from the sessions. Like I'm in my last month of the year. I've seen how much money I've made. It's not like I need an extra, I don't know, however many hundred dollars, like I, I'm, I feel like I can just go and do the session for free. So I did the sessions. Um, and I actually, the cousin, the mom of the cousin ended up, um, sending me money, which was so nice, but his sister just got me a gift. And honestly, I felt great about doing that session because I always think like, if they're not gonna, if I'm not going to do it for them, they're going to go to someone else. They're going to pay someone else. Um, and you know, I don't know. I just feel like it's something that I can do. I enjoy it too. Like, I feel like I, you know, we get to go out and like drive somewhere together and do the session. So, um, yeah, I did that in Washington and, um, honestly, so fun. The whole trip was so fun. Thanksgiving was amazing. I hope you guys all had a good Thanksgiving at this point. It was a couple weeks ago, but I did get some good Cyber Monday, Black Friday things. Nothing. Well, did I get anything photography related? I kind of did. I, I think I got SD cards and stuff like that. Um, but I did get like a different rug for my office, like a rug to go underneath the rug I have right now. I got some snowboard stuff cause I'm trying to be a snowboard girly this winter. Um, yeah. So Thanksgiving was great. I truly am in the holiday spirit. I will tell you guys, we got a second Christmas tree for my bedroom upstairs. We like our bedroom is basically the whole attic kind of like renovated. It's pretty large. So we have a very, like a lot of space to put a Christmas tree. So we went and got a second Christmas tree. We got like our normal Christmas tree for downstairs, but we got a second Christmas tree for our room. And honestly, it just makes like waking up so much more magical. Like we wake up, we set the timer to, um, like light up the tree at like 7 a.m. And it's just so cute and it's such a vibe. I literally love it. Um, I have my Black Friday sale. At this point, it was like a week or two ago, but um, it went amazing. And I want to say thank you everyone who supported my Black Friday slash Cyber Monday sale. It truly means so much and I appreciate you guys so much. And I know specifically a lot of my sales and a lot of my course purchases come from people that listen to the podcast. So I know you guys, I see you and I want to say thank you. I love you guys so much. Um, and I guess I already said this, but I start, I'm working on a new course and I'm super excited about it. I 
haven't launched a course. Well, I guess I launched my wedding photographer course in May this year, but, um, this one's going to be like less of a, um, like the wedding course is, you know, I had a videographer follow me around at a wedding, whereas this course is more sit down. Um, it's going to include like some one-on-one coaching, which I'm excited about. So yeah, stay tuned. I'm hoping to launch it February, maybe March of this upcoming year. So, or 2024 technically. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, we're going to get into the stories for today. Oh, I have one more thing I wanted to say. I put this camera next to me on the table. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see this little pink camera I'm holding in my hand. This, I want to put you guys on this camera. I've talked about it a little bit, but I just got my sister and my cousin to buy this camera and my other cousin, three people to buy this camera. It's the Canon PowerShot SD 1200. And I'll try to link it in the description of this episode. But it's just like a little digital camera from like 2006 or something. And it takes like the most perfect film type of like it. Lo- the photos it takes looks like film. Not only that, but it's relatively cheap. We were finding it on eBay from like $100 to $150 like working condition. So if you guys are looking for a good digital camera for a gift for someone or for yourself and you want something that can just fit in your pocket, this is the camera. Like, I literally put it in my front pocket of my pants, which is amazing. So I just wanted to give a little shout-out to that camera real quick. Okay, I'm going to go through and read some of these stories. I want to give, I I guess, like a little bit of a trigger warning for this episode. We have some talk of, um, I think, miscarriages, of cancer. Um, Just, like, be prepared for, like, an emotional episode because there are some emotional stories here. So um, if you're not really feeling that today, just skip just skip this episode, go to the next one, but just wanted to let you guys know. Okay, so this first story. The bride and groom had previously asked me to announce their pregnancy at their wedding after the ceremony during the first large group photo. Instead of counting down or saying, okay, everyone smile or everyone say cheese, I said, okay, everyone say the bride is pregnant. The looks of surprise and happiness on everyone's faces was honestly so precious and moving. I literally had tears behind the camera capturing it all as everyone started celebrating, hugging the bride, asking her how far along she was, wiping away tears, etc. The amount of love and happiness for them was so strong. It was the highlight of my year. That is so sweet. And... I love that. It's just so cute that we as photographers get to be involved in like some really special moments for people. I think a lot of the times we kind of look past that when we do, you know, a wedding every single weekend, it stops feeling like a special moment and it just kind of feels repetitive. But moments like this where you're involved in literally telling everyone that the bride is pregnant is amazing. And I've had moments like this where I've been behind the camera, like actually crying, like tears streaming down my face because of something so sweet that is happening, like at a wedding or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So I do want to let you guys know, I was sitting at the coffee shop this morning and going through these submissions and I actually was crying, (laughs) reading through these submissions and like picking the stories to read. Um, I I'm not like a super big crier. I guess I am sometimes, but I've never cried on the podcast. But if I do cry, I just want to let you guys know I might because this like, yeah, these stories are really, really touching. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the next one. I was shooting a wedding and the groom's dad had early Alzheimer's. He seemed pretty with it, but you could tell that he was struggling at points during the day. During the reception, the DJ dedicated a song to him and literally everyone was there all crowded around him, arms over shoulders, belting out Piano Man by Billy Joel. I don't know why, but it it was seriously the most touching and beautiful moment I've seen I've seen since I've been doing weddings. Everyone coming together to support this man and sing with him, knowing he will soon forget everyone was just so kind and beautiful. Yeah, that's really really sweet. I feel like I see a lot of moments on the dance floor at a wedding that just really get me. 
and <clears throat> sorry um specifically like at a wedding I feel like those are like super emotional days to begin with and just to have you know like the groom's dad knowing that he is going to f- forget everything soon um that I'm sure that was like so hard for the bride and groom and then just seeing like everyone at the wedding just supporting the groom's dad is really really sweet um yeah that's that's really sweet (laughs) okay um I just lost my place hold on please hold I'm so sorry okay we've got a lot of these I'm scrolling through all of them whoa okay this next one is a longer one Hi, Cassidy. Thank you for everything you do for the photography community. My business has grown so much since I've been listening to your podcast. You have both inspired and educated me. Thank you. That's so sweet. I've been fortunate enough for many things to come to mind when you ask this question. However, one specific occurrence stands out. I was shooting a fairly long wedding day solo, about 12 hours, and was having a great time capturing the day. The bride and groom were both very kind and supportive throughout the entire process. Once dinner time rolled around, they had asked to avoid taking photos while people were eating, and I obviously completely understand why. So I took a break from shooting and went over to discuss with the DJ to make sure we were all on the same timeline. I was so caught up in the moment that I hadn't even realized the bride and groom had given me my own labeled seat by their table. While I was talking with the DJ, the bride came over and brought me to my seat where the groom had just placed a full plate of food for me. They both said that they heard many photographers don't get to eat on wedding days and wanted to make sure that didn't happen for me. I was so grateful and touched by this wonderful act of kindness. They both took valuable time out of their special day to care for me, someone they already were paying. Definitely two of my most kind-hearted clients. Wow. That's something a lot of you guys said was when your clients just like make sure that you're fed and taken care of. And this is so sweet that like people on their own wedding day are going out of their way to make sure that you, a vendor, are taken care of. That's That's so sweet. And honestly, it just shows that there's like still good people out there in the world. I think a lot of the times we can kind of get caught up in like one bridezilla or just one unkind person at a wedding and then just completely ruins the experience for us. And it honestly, I feel like that feeling lasts for a couple weddings too. Like you have one bad experience at a wedding or shoot and it takes a few more interactions with people to kind of get your faith restored in humanity a little bit. But I mean, this is something that really is just going to make sure that you, yeah, you're super taken care of. That's so, so sweet. And honestly, as I'm reading these stories, and I hope for you guys too, you're kind of reminded of moments with clients that you've had in the past. And these stories kind of remind you of some good times that you've had with people. That's so sweet. A lot of you just like... You just have the best stories. Okay. Hi, Cassidy. I've been following you for ages. Love your work. Last year we had an apartment. Oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Last year we had an apartment fire caused by my neighbor. We unfortunately lost everything that we owned, including our beautiful cat and all of my equipment that I owned for my business was upstairs. We had no renter's insurance. I know, I know, my cameras were newer and were they were not on my policy yet. Thousands of gallons of water got thrown on all my equipment. It was a total loss. The newspaper had wrote a local article about me because I was from such a small town and having something like this happen to me made the whole town rally around us. One thing in particular that really made my heart happy was that one day I opened my doorstep at our new apartment after we finally got settled to receive a large box from Sony. Oh my gosh. Inside was a brand new Sony camera with three lenses and all the merch that I could ever want. Apparently somebody has submitted my name to an organization through Sony for a woman-owned business. I've never been so grateful in my life that a company would care so much about me. I know this brand 
this, I know this business is hard, but there's so many good people and I truly love what I do. Needless to say, Sony, you have my heart. And this is from Stephanie. Okay. I already love Sony, (laughs) but if that is not a reason to love Sony even more, that, oh boy. Okay. An apartment fire caused by your neighbor. That is so unfortunate. Like literally I cannot even imagine and it oh it just sucks that you didn't have insurance. I know like okay, insurance is one of those things that you don't think about needing or like you think oh I need that. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll put my stuff on my insurance tomorrow. But then <laughs> you end up procrastinating or you forget about it and then you end up really needing it like in times and moments like this you're like oh I just wish that 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 I would have remembered to do that and then okay let's talk about the person who submitted you to or just like what did they say they did submitted your name to Sony that is amazing I just love to see how like people in communities I'm sure these people were not even photographers they are just good people submitted your name to Sony and then Sony being the queens and kings that they are just sent you gear like oh my gosh that's incredible because it is so hard when you are first starting photography getting the gear that you need I feel like I was very fortunate in being able to use gear that wasn't mine like I was working for a nonprofit, I was able to use their gear but I hear of so many people who you know, that is their biggest hurdle when they're starting their business. And it's, it's tens of thousands of dollars. As you start upgrading your gear, like it is so much money. And to lose all of that is absolutely devastating. If you've worked so hard to reinvest your money back into your business, and then to just have it all be gone. Wow. Sony, we love you, Stephanie. I'm so sorry that happened. But um, I'm glad to hear that you know, people were coming together and helping you, um, in that time of need. I do feel like a fire would be so hard because you just, you lose things that cannot be replaced. I don't know if people still have like printout photos, but I know like a lot of people when they have fires, the biggest thing that they lose that is like the worst thing they could lose is like their photo memories, things that aren't backed up. Like my, my baby pictures are like, printed in like these this little box that my mom gave me like they're not digital yet and I think stuff like that is what you really end up missing in a fire that's actually I have a fireproof box for like all of my hard drives and I put all of my old drives in a fireproof box and I've been putting all my personal photos on in on those hard drives in that box as well just in case something like this happens This next one, sure. Um, This person says, I've witnessed people hyping other photographers up for photo shoots. It's amazing to see how much people care about the photographer who's doing their job. Yeah, it's really sweet to see like other photographers just like, I don't know, just being good people to other photographers and not viewing them so much as competition, but more so just like community seeing if if you go and see another photographer out in public like don't give them the side eye don't be like why are they here literally be like oh slay like oh you're doing so good or whatever like I think that's really sweet yeah I think that's amazing too okay let's go to the next one first off Cassidy you are amazing and you are and are truly what brought me from being a hobbyist that had no idea what they were doing into a successful business owner. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. That's so sweet. Anyways, on my second paid shoot ever, I did an extended family session. I went to their home on a beautiful private lake with an island. The grounds were just covered in fruit trees. Just stunning. Anyways, as I was leaving, the grandma picked me a bouquet of the most beautiful flowers. I was just starting my business and this kind gesture meant the world to me. That's really sweet. I love grandmas at sessions and weddings. The grandmas, like, grandmas get it. They just do. Like, I know I can go up to any grandma and just, like, they just get it. Like, they're just going to 
take you under their wing. They're going to take care of you. They're going to be kind to you. (laughs) And like a bouquet is just so, that's just so cute and kind. And honestly, I would probably cry if that were me, especially, okay. It was their second paid shoot ever. A lot of these stories, people will say that like, it was something that happened kind of at the beginning of their career. And I think that's like a really important time for a lot of people that time when you're first starting your career, starting your business, like you're really fragile. You're really self-aware. You're really self-conscious. You're, you have a lot of imposter syndrome. So to have people come alongside you and encourage you and like lift you up and just make you feel good about what you're doing and make you feel like you're not an imposter, like your work is worth it. That's just a very common theme in these stories today. And I can get down with it. Okay. Kind of sad, but happy and sweet at the same time. I do a Christmas session for a little girl and her mom every year. This year, the mom passed away. (laughs) Okay. This year, the mom passed away unexpectedly in her sleep on July 4th. The little girl and her dad have been trying to navigate this new life together alone since she is only seven and an only child. For their Christmas photos, the dad surprised his daughter with a ceramic heart filled with her mom's ashes so that her mom could still be a part of the Christmas photos that they do with me every year. Needless to say, we all cried. Yeah, girl, I'm crying too, okay? (laughs) Wow, that's really sweet. Okay, (laughs) hold on, I need to pull it together. Okay. (laughs) Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, let's let's kind of recap this. I okay, I just want to say sorry my mind is kind of jambled from reading that. I feel like as photographers, did I already say this? We just get to witness so many special moments and the really cool thing about photography is people want to remember the season of life that they're in. Sometimes it's sad, sometimes it's happy. Um they're I didn't like put the submission in, but someone like submitted something about um, just like a family wanting to do photos with their dad because their dad had like cancer. I think it's really cool as a photographer to be able to capture those moments for people. Like those are photos they're literally going to cherish forever. One of my friends, his mom just passed away from um, a brain tumor, but they did a photo shoot with his mom before she passed away. And those photos, like they're just so precious. And I know they mean so much to every single family member as well. Um, So I think it's just really cool that we're able to capture those moments for people. And also like (laughs) a daddy daughter duo is just so cute. And I know that these two are just going to go and they're going to conquer the world. They are like, I just know their, their mom is always with them in those ashes, and that is just so cute. Okay, I need to keep going. When shooting engagements and an older couple stops to congratulate the couple, I just find it so wholesome. It doesn't always happen, but when it war- but when it does, it really warms my heart. I like to think it's good luck for the future. Honestly, yeah. Like, I love specifically on a wedding day, walking around like downtown with my couple and having people like, they are like celebrities. People are stopping and saying congrats. And like when it's an older couple specifically, it just really warms your heart because it almost feels like, I don't know, it just gives you hope. And you're like, people are good. Like there are still good people in the world. Obviously there's bad people as well, but yeah, it's really sweet. And I, specifically on a wedding day love just like being able to I guess witness it but then also I love to capture my couple's reactions like they just are smiling so big and yeah it's really really sweet okay one couple whose wedding I photographed only hired me to stay until 9 p.m but told me to stay and party with them for however long I wanted they even told me to bring my husband for the reception At the end of the night, they gave me a $400 tip, which is the most I've ever been tipped. 
The bride has continued to text me complimenting their gallery and has sent updates of their wedding photos framed and hung on their walls. Truly the best feeling. 100% agreed. There's a mix in here of the couple just appreciating you, treating you like a real person. They invite your husband to come to the reception. That's literally so sweet. And then on top of that, they show their appreciation for you by giving you a gift, like a huge tip. And tips are kind of controversial (laughs) just in general, but I feel like in our industry, you know, it's either someone tips you or they don't, but like, I don't get salty if they don't tip me. Like, I don't think I tipped my wedding photographer. Like, I just didn't realize that was a thing. But when someone does tip you, it's a physical way of saying, hey, I appreciate you. And like, I just want to bless you by giving you this tip. But I feel like there are so many other ways that clients like make you feel special. Like she said, I guess she or he, I don't know who wrote this in. They said like the, the bride has just been texting them over and over about how much they love the gallery. That has been another very common thing with your guys' submissions. Just like your clients making you feel like their photos, they're obsessed with their photos. Like for me, I'm obsessed with every single gallery I deliver, deliver, but when my client reciprocates that obsession, I am all about it. Like I, I have people's phone numbers, my client's phone numbers for a reason because they just like hit me up with like, you know, these paragraphs about how much they love their photos. And that is like the kindest thing for sure. Oh, and also a lot of you said like when you're tipped, you really appreciate that. Um, And I agree. Like I think a tip just kind of, it's not necessary, but it's so appreciated. Like it's just, yeah, it's amazing. Okay. My client's parents passed away before her wedding. So her best friend slash maid of honor surprised the bride after the ceremony with a little box to open. We moved to a private little area where the bride opened the gift. It was two monarch butterflies, one for each of her parents. The maid of honor wanted her friend to know that her parents may not have been there in person, but they were still there in spirit. The butterflies fluttered in the hands in the bride's hands before flying off into the sunset. The bride cried tears of joy, and I have to say I was crying behind my camera as well. Yeah, that's really, really sweet. I'm really trying not to cry, guys. <laughs> that's so sweet. I, It's just amazing, like, just seeing people, I don't know, acknowledge people that have passed at weddings. I think it's really sweet. And, you know, it's like, obviously, the bride really cared about her parents. And it's, it just sucks when, like, someone's parents can't be there. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) And, okay, so let me tell you guys a story. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I've literally never cried so much on a podcast episode. What the heck? Okay, so there was this one wedding that I shot, and um, the bride had told me beforehand on the questionnaire that her mom and the groom's mom had both passed away. And, um, they did this little, like, when it came to like the parent dances, they did like a dance honoring their mothers. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And they did like a slideshow of like photos of their moms, just pictures of each of their moms. And then the couple like danced together in the middle of the dance floor and they were just like crying. Right. And, um, Oh my gosh, guys, my voice is so shaky. Um, And (laughs) okay, I'm going to need a minute. I looked over at Charlie because (laughs) Charlie's mom passed away when he was like 12, I think. And I hadn't like, I didn't know Charlie when it happened. But regardless, there are just occasionally things that will like make Charlie, I don't know, a little bit more emotional. He like obviously like has grieved but grief is really hard and everybody grieves differently so he um yeah I just looked over at him during this dance and he just had like tears streaming down his face like he wasn't taking photos or anything and it was so sweet and then 
<laughs> this is the part that really gets me. After the speech, um, or not the speech, after the dance, Charlie like went up to the couple. Like it was kind of like a little bit of like a low moment. He just kind of like told them that it, he just was really touched by it, that his mom passed away too. And then like the couple like brought Charlie into like this group hug <laughs> and they were all crying. And then they brought me into the hug too. But like it was so so sweet of the couple to just like I don't know like they just kind of like forgot that he was a photographer for a minute and just like gave him a hug and it was so so sweet and honestly that has been like such a highlight of my career was just seeing I guess maybe not a highlight but it was just like the sweetest moment just happening in front of my eyes okay guys (laughs) I need to like get my crying voice out of here. It needs to go away so I can keep telling these stories. I knew that one was going to get me. I had a feeling it's a little too close to home. Okay. Hi, girl. (laughs) Okay. Hi, girl. Thanks for always keeping me motivated. I was on a street style shoot this year, shooting in front of some beautiful apartments in Barcelona and the model was changing outfits in the street. The doorman of the building came out, and we all thought he was going to tell us to go away. But instead, he invite us, invited us to go into the... Um, was it a hotel? Oh, no. they The doorman invited us to go into the apartment so that the model could change inside instead of changing on the streets. That's so sweet. And honestly, that's such a simple gesture. Like, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I just love... <sighs> men (laughs) I'm just kidding I just love when I don't know I feel like a lot of the times when I'm shooting especially in like a city for some reason I'm just always a little bit more scared of like a man in the city just in general I think as girls we can be scared of men because we're girls and they're a man but you know when a man like this just goes into something super sweet like that I mean, it's just a simple gesture like, hey, do you want to come inside and change? But it really is so, so kind. Starting out in photography, I only had one camera and my shutter jammed during the speeches with 45 minutes left of their photo coverage and I still had to do the photo table dash. I panicked because I was so unprepared and had no backup plan. By the grace of God, the groom's uncle had introduced himself to me earlier and was comparing his Canon camera to mine that he had brought just for fun. I snuck over to him and quickly asked if I could use his camera for the remainder of the time I was there. And he said, of course. He was such an angel and I learned a lot of valuable lessons that night and bought my second camera body the next day. That's so sweet. Okay, you know how like Uncle Joe at a wedding always gets flamed like we're always like oh that one uncle at a wedding that brings their camera well that uncle saved the day okay so let's stop let's stop hating on uncle joe and let's start to use uncle joe for your backup (laughs) that's so sweet though like i just love i love family at weddings it's so sweet i did a wedding back in april this year that i'll never forget I remember taking photos of the reception when I noticed a gorgeous bronze ceramic camera that was part of one of the photo booths. And I was like, I definitely have to ask the bride where she got it from because I want one so bad for my office. By the end of the night, I went to the bride and groom to say goodbye and gave them a wedding gift I put together for them. They were so grateful and I instantly remembered to ask the bride about the camera. But before I even said a word, she said, hold on, wait, I have something for you. She went to the booth and came back with the ceramic camera. She said that she bought she bought it for the booth but wanted to gift it to me afterwards as a way of saying thanks for everything. I had never felt so appreciated and I cried. <laughs> I did. The camera has a very special spot at my desk and I love it. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love I just love people. They're so nice. That's amazing. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh boy, I need to take a deep breath. (laughs) This first line. Oh, guys, 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 guys. Okay, hold on, hold on. Here we go. 
We got my son's autism diagnosis in 2020, and the whole process was incredibly difficult and isolating, as was just about everything else in the world at that time. It was a, not a good time to enter a grief cycle and to need a community of people to surround you only by a computer screen. Through photography, I met with countless clients who were either in the professional field of special needs or who had special needs children of their own who were able to lift me up during this time. I have tried to explain to my client base on a public level, but they will never truly know how blessed I was by each and every one of them along the way. They each had the encouragement I needed to they each had the encouragement that I needed to hear and the time that I needed to hear it. With the difficulty and grief I was experiencing in my own life, I wish my clients truly knew how much they have impacted me. Not just a general nod or a comment to thank them for investing in my small business, but from one human to another. The impact they have had on me is one the impact that they have had on me in one of the most difficult times in my life is something that I will always truly treasure. That's so sweet. I just love the community of the fact that like these are your clients and they're just treating you like a human. They care about you. And I think it goes both ways. Like having clients that care about you and you truly caring about your clients is something that is so irreplaceable. Like that is so rare and it's amazing that you were able to meet these people while you know going through such a hard time and I think a lot of that happens for a reason like people are put in your life for a reason at a specific time whether you know it or not and I just think it's so cool that during this time all the people that you were encountering as clients like in some way shape or form just understood what you were going through or they were there to just kind of like help you talk through the season. That's just so cool. One moment that stands out to me in my career was a father-daughter dance. This one was not with her father, but her uncle who stepped in for his brother as he had recently passed away. During the dance, the bride's mother comes and brings the jacket from the the special table for the loved ones who've passed and places her father's suit jacket on the bride. Not a dry eye in the whole room, including my second photographer and me. Yeah, same girl. (laughs) Wow, that's really sweet. A lot of the times during dances, like, just things will get me, guys. Okay, I need to keep going, but wow, that was really cute. A couple booked my husband and I for an anniversary in-home session over, over the summer. We had such a fun time getting to know them and capturing their love. During their session, a ladybug flew on her and she had gotten very emotional because she said it was good luck. Their session time went over about 30 minutes and they tipped us extra for it, even after we said it was totally okay, which was really sweet. After we delivered the photos, she told me how this was going to be for a baby announcement, but shortly after booking, she had a miscarriage. She said she was close to canceling the session, but decided to go through with it. She said working with us put her at ease When the ladybug landed on her, she knew she'd get pregnant again soon. A few months go by and they're having a baby and just booked us for an in-home family session when the baby is here and we seriously cannot wait to capture this next chapter. Wow, that's that's so sweet. I, I think it's like clients are in so many different stages of life when you capture them they can, sometimes they're insecure. Sometimes they have just like really traumatic things happening for them and you just never know. And it's the impact of being a photographer guys. Like also this person said that being with this photographer put her at ease. Like your presence puts people at ease, whether or not they voice it to you, like you actually do have an impact on people and an impact on their lives and they have an impact on you too. Um, yeah, I had a couple's mini session and I didn't know this during the session, but the girl didn't like her side profile. Well, I posted her looking to the side and when I delivered the gallery, she told me she hated her side profile, but looking at the photos, she fell in love with it and now she loves it. I literally almost cried that guys, this is actually me. This is actually me. 
it's not me, but it's me. It's me because I same way. I do not like my side profile, but when I got my wedding photos taken and like I have photos from the side of me, I just feel like I love it so much more. Like, I guess like we are so much harder on ourselves and then like to see it from a photographer's perspective, I'm just like, okay, another example. Let me, when I do sessions and people tell me like, I'm really insecure about, I don't know, my teeth or whatever it is, my double chin. As a photographer, I just feel like I see so much beauty in people and all of their uniqueness. Um, I meet people. I'm like, wow, you're beautiful. Like I'm capturing your beauty. You're so pretty or you're so whatever. But I feel like people don't see that in themselves, but you are able to really capture things as you see it and make people feel confident in themselves again. Like your posing, your choice of angles, it really instills confidence in people and kind of like gives them the confidence that they didn't have before. And I think that's so cool. Like I've heard time and time again, instances like this. Okay, moving on. We have so many more stories, guys. I need to stop talking. This is a wild story mixed in. I was shooting a wedding where the coordinator was super weird and she wouldn't let any of the vendors eat when the bride and groom ate, even though they had all, they had, they all had them sign in their contract that they were supposed to eat when the bride and groom ate. I wasn't, wait, what? Oh, wait, what? Oh, is, oh, okay, okay. I'm so sorry. She wasn't saying like, you'll eat later. She was basically saying, don't plan on eating any of this food at all. That's what the coordinator was saying. Word got out because the videographer and the coordinator almost got into it. And the mother of the bride heard that this was happening. She went behind the coordinator's back, had the caterer set up an amazing little table that had her own mini buffet. And after the bride and groom got their food, she got on the mic and told all the vendors to enjoy their dinner break. It was an amazing series of events to watch unfold. That is iconic. That mother of the bride is an icon. And I absolutely love that she did that. Yes, I love, I love, that's a good hero story. I love a good hero. Back in October, my kid's school asked me if I would be interested in donating a session for the seniors to raffle off at the fall, fall carnival. The night of the carnival, my session was bought for over $500. That was way more than what I thought it would bid for. Fast forward to the the session. I'm getting ready to leave and the wife hands me another $500. I was shook because I had absolutely no problem donating my time for the session to help the senior, senior class. I got in my car and I started bawling. I'm a single mom and the money was much needed for the holiday season. That's so sweet stop that's amazing like okay they thought that your work was worth over five hundred dollars that's amazing and then like they leave you another five hundred oh guys people are so nice I was doing a newborn shoot and the baby had this beautiful cream handmade blanket with the alphabet on it also in cream so it was actually cute and not like a cheesy blanket I was pregnant and I told the mom how much I absolutely loved it A few months later, after my baby was born, I got a package in the mail and the mom had made me a blanket exactly like hers and sent a sweet note. It made me remember how lucky we are not only to capture others' lives, but also to become friends with them. Wow. I love when people remember the small things and just use the small things as a way to encourage you later on like this like that mom definitely didn't have to do that like she could have just tipped you honestly or could have just like sent you a little card but instead she went out of her way to make you a blanket oh I just can't this is just too nice I was photographing a couple for their engagement shoot and we were up on some rocks as we were leaving the location And an old couple stopped us and the old man was actually a retired wedding photographer. And he showed us his photos of, (laughs) he showed us his photos that he took of my couple from super far away. And he said he was so happy to see a photographer out there killing it. The pics he took were so gorgeous and I gave him my card 
So I hope that he can send them to me because they were stunning photos. Guys, this is about to be me when I'm like 60 years old or 70 or 80. Okay, I guess maybe not 60, but like 80 years old. I'm about to come up to these photographers at the park and be like, I used to do this back in my day. (laughs) And then just like the fact that this photographer was just like the photographer wasn't rude. Like I feel like almost... It's almost just like a little gift that you're able to meet someone who has done your, they've done your career. They've been there, done that, they're experienced. And honestly, for them, it probably felt a little bit like reliving those days by them being able to take photos of your couple. Um, That's so cute. Uh, I'm just picturing the cutest old man right now. (laughs) Hi, I'm Austin wait oh hi I'm Austin a wedding videographer and I had a client book me sort of last minute for their wedding around two months out so we didn't get a lot of time to get to know each other when I showed up to the wedding the bride told me she had a gift for me she pulled out a custom hand-drawn portrait of my fiance and I my now wife in front of our wedding venue we had recently chosen she said she had been praying over us in our future marriage and wanted to gift us something special I thought it was so crazy and kind and thoughtful that that she was to do that on her wedding day so okay I love I just when people do things on their wedding day that it's just so selfless I'm like I'm just a measly photographer videographer like and you just you went and did something for me like that's just so sweet like you don't have to and you do it anyway like oh I love it For context, I'm a real estate photographer and I got asked to photograph a couple's engagement shoot. I was super eager, but I had to be clear that this isn't my style of photography. It was a, it was for a friend of a friend. So they said not to worry about anything and that it's totally fine. I drove to the location to scout it out and was feeling the nerves grow every second. Luckily for me, there was an engagement shoot going on. So from a distance, I saw what the photographer was doing and how she was posing them. Only for a minute, though. So, okay, sorry. I kind of got distracted there. Only for a minute. I waited for their shoot to finish up, and I approached the photographer to ask her some questions about posing, prompts, how to not be awkward. Awkward. Oh, my gosh. The angle. The, oh, my gosh. I cannot speak. The angel. The angel that she was told me not to worry at all. She gave me five poses to work with and showed me some of her photos so I can get an idea of what to look for and how to approach it. I couldn't be more thankful for that five minute conversation. And every once in a while, we still talk and communicate. That's what the photographer community should be all about. Oh my gosh. Yes. It really should be all about that. Also, like, why am I low key hoping that like these two like get together? (laughs) I'm sure like, okay, I don't know if both of you are single, but like, that would be a great story. Great little love story there. I made a tiny best friend on my last wedding this year after I let her take a few pictures on my camera during getting ready photos. It was really sweet, except while I was shooting the ceremony, she kept running down the aisle to come and hold my hand. The real kicker was that I missed some good shots of the bride and groom coming down the aisle because I had to get her out of the way. Thankfully, my second shooter got those pictures, but the moral of the story is maybe don't let kids play with your camera. (laughs) that's really cute though uh kids at a wedding they're so adorable okay this is such a tiny thing but it's fine at the end of okay at the end of the first wedding I ever worked as a second shooter one of the flower girls came up to me and gave me a huge hug she had barely said anything all day long to anyone and this small act of affection still warms my heart to this day I had been beating myself up over small things all wedding day, and I wish I had done some things differently all day long, but I suppose I did something right by her. See, guys, we always think that we're like our worst critic, and sometimes we just need to get out of our heads. Like, I am overthinking things constantly after a wedding day. I'm like, should I have said that or should I have done this? And it's just like, what's done is done. Let's move on and stop beating yourself up over it. And I think just this, okay, so this flower girl, just a little act of kindness. It really does show you that not everyone is so worried about you all day long in a wedding day. I was shooting a wedding while nine weeks pregnant, morning sickness. 
Okay, hold on. I was shooting a wedding while having nine weeks pregnant morning sickness. And it was in full effect. The mother of the bride asked if I wanted anything to drink. And I jokingly said apple juice because at the time, that's all that my stomach could handle. 40 minutes go by and she comes up to me with two gallons of apple juice and watermelon. Again, one of the only things that my stomach could handle. That was the nicest thing I've ever had happen. Along with that, at the same wedding, my husband, who is the second shooter, kindly offered to shoot the last two hours of the wedding so that I can nap in the truck. Aww. Wait, two gallons of apple juice? That's so nice. I'm telling you guys, some of these moms and grandmas at weddings, like, they, they are who we need. They are who we need. I was doing a grad shoot at the New York Public Library when a nice guy came up and asked me to take an iPhone photo of him and his new wife. Turns out they just eloped from England to get married in New York City. I ended up shooting some quick photos for them on my camera and emailing it to them later. He responded saying that they were so happy because they didn't know if they were going to have a wedding day photo to hang on their wall at home, but now they would. Super thankful my grad client was open to letting me shoot just a few shots of them in the middle of her session. Oh, that's so sweet. And like they weren't going to have a wedding photo and you were just quickly able to take that photo for them. Guys, be be a photographer like this, okay? Be willing to just make someone stay. Oh, this happened to me. While I was in Washington, we were like, at this park with my nephew and we were like looking at the mountain there called Mount Rainier. It's like beautiful. And we were sitting on this bench and this guy had like this telescopic camera and he was taking photos of the mountain and I was like, Oh, whatever. And when we were about to leave, he came up to us and he was like, Hey, I took a few photos of like you guys. And like, he took some photos of my nephew and he was like, I want to email them to you. Cause they're really cute. He emailed them to me and they were amazing they were so cute they were gorgeous and I was like you literally just made all of our day by doing that like be the photographer that makes someone stay okay guys that's all I gotta say last week of April 2019 in Dubai it was my last wedding before I go it was my last wedding to shoot before I go to my home country for my own wedding I do Arabic weddings most of the year and our bride wore high sneakers And I told her that I was planning to wear sneakers just like that on my wedding day too. She asked me when my wedding was and I told her the date and she immediately said, later, I will give them to you. It's yours. I laughed a little bit and I said, thank you, thinking that she's bluffing or just being nice. And TBH, I didn't have wedding shoes yet at that time. Right after the wedding, she went back to her room and it was just the two of us first. She suddenly said, come quickly. And she took her shoes off. Take it quickly. Hide it before someone sees it because she thought that some of the people in the bridal party might be jealous. Anyway, I took it without knowing that we have the same size. When I got home, I tried it and they fit perfectly on me. It's like it was perfectly made for me. It was amazing and I wore the shoes to my wedding. Until now, I still have the shoes and they're one of my favorite shoes that I own. Are you kidding me? That's so cute that's so nice oh. my faith is really restored in clients right now guys it really is okay this one's from Amer studios once when i was leaving a wedding the entire room of like 50 to 60 people stood up to give me a standing ovation it was an intimate family property wedding and everyone there was so kind and welcoming the whole day i have never felt so loved and appreciated it was so surreal That is adorable. Honestly, I would be like, I wouldn't even know what to do. If someone gave me a standing ovation, like, I truly don't even know what I would do. Like, that is just beyond. It's so nice. Like, they don't have to do that at all. My sister and I flew to Boston in May to do a photo video, to do photo and video for a wedding. We did a bridal session the day before the wedding at Boston Common. It was super busy and the couple wanted to do their first look on the bridge. While we were waiting for the bride, I started to talk to the bride's dad and he was surprised that I had never read Make Your Way for Ducklings, which is a children's book that takes place at the Boston Common. He was so nice and it was really fun to chat with him and the groom for a little bit. 
Then the bride got there and the bridal session was amazing. Afterwards, the bride's family gave us a tour of Boston and I've seriously never met people as funny and kind as them. The wedding the next day was stunning, even though it poured down rain the entire day. The day after, the bride's dad gave us a ride to the airport with other guests that had flown in for the wedding. When we got to the airport, he gave my sister and I a very generous tip and then gave me a copy of Make Way for Ducklings. I have no idea how he had time to get that book that weekend, but I literally almost cried when he gave it to me. It was the most thoughtful gift ever. Oh, so sweet. I I had a couple last year. At this point, it was two years ago when I did their engagement photos, and they drove me around. We, like, flew in. They drove me and Charlie around um, Long Island is where it was. They drove us around, showed us different places, drove us to the beach, they were so, so nice. And people like that, like, I just feel like they almost become like your friends. Like, I don't know. I just love when it's like, I'm not just a photographer. I'm not just a transaction. Like we're just people. And it's so, so cute that this father of the bride got you a copy of this book. Like, oh, that is so nice. Okay. I took my college roommates from 2010 graduation photos 13 years later, a couple of weeks ago in Houston. We were walking down the street and so many people congratulated her. She shared with me after the session that her boyfriend hadn't really hyped up the fact that she was actually finally graduating. So seeing the strangers on the street do it for her was awesome. And me taking her photos was a full circle moment too. And now I'm crying. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Ugh. Get yourself a better boyfriend. <laughs> Respectfully. Uh, I love, uh, like I said, I love when people just hype you up on the street. It's just the best feeling. One time while I was doing a family shoot, they had a three-year-old daughter and a newborn baby. They told me prior to the session that they wanted a few photos of just them and their newborn, but wasn't able to bring an additional family member along to hold the three-year-old. So they would just bring toys instead. We decided to do this at the end of the session so it would be quick and made the most sense. When the time came for me to take this photo, the three-year-old came running over to my camera and said that she wanted to take the photo of her parents. I ended up holding her hand and taking the photo with her, which by the way turned out to be one of the sweetest photos, and she was so excited to be taking the photo and told me that she wanted to be like me one day. This was by far the kindest thing ever as it was coming from a little girl who just wanted to help take a photo of her parents and newborn sister oh my gosh I'm not crying I'm fine I'm fine that's so sweet I I just can't I simply cannot okay I need to keep going I have two more stories Whew. you guys are making me cry I like a moron forgot my camera gear and only realized five minutes before my clients showed up Luckily, a random photographer was greeting her clients next to me, and she saved my life by letting me borrow her backup camera. I'll never forget her. Are you kidding me? That is so nice. That is very nice. I am trying to put myself in a scenario like this and try to see, like, okay, is this something that I would do? That It's hard to put your trust in someone that you don't know, just letting them use your backup gear. But honestly... That's so nice of this photographer. I want to be like this photographer. I do. I strive to be like them. Okay, here's our last one. Um, when I shot a wedding a few weeks ago, I shot it on my birthday because that was the wedding date and the couple was so thoughtful to handwrite me, both the groom and the bride separately. They wrote me a thank you and happy birthday card and gave me a goodie bag. How sweet is that? I could cry just thinking about it. It's their big day and they thought to do something special like that for me, despite all that they have going on. I love them so much and I'm planning on staying friends with them for a lifetime. Oh, that's so nice of them. Okay. Guys, if your faith in clients is not restored after listening to this episode, I don't know what is because I'm about to like <laughs> go stop this recording and go cry in my bed because it's so sweet. Um, thank you guys so much for writing in these stories. Honestly, this podcast, 
could not be what it is without you guys like submitting stories like this to me. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope you liked this episode. I would love to keep doing this every year. Um, I don't know if I can handle this multiple times a year because I literally emotionally, it's too much for me. But um, I'm hoping I do this next year. Same time next year, guys. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks for listening. That's all I have for today's episode. Um, I would love for you to give me a review. Helps so, so much with like ratings and all that stuff. So if you like this episode, if you like this podcast, give me a five-star review. And I will see you next Monday for another episode. All right. Have a great rest of your day.